Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to Lord Christ. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash them. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders? but eat with defiled hands. He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. For it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. Who abandon the commandment of God and hold the human tradition? Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, Deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Deal with whatever is within us. 
Today, ask the Lord to search your heart. Ask him to help you see ways in which you are susceptible to sin. And ask him to help keep cleansing. And ask him to ask, excuse me, and ask him to keep cleansing. Jesus, purify my heart today. When the Pharisees and the scribes are concerned about how they were washed, people were washing or not washing. There was a particular way that they were supposed to wash. It was just alluded to. We know how we're supposed to wash our hands and for how long and make sure under the fingernails. Well, they would have to wash in a particular way up to the elbow in order to be ritually clean. And if they didn't do that, then they were considered, as it said, defective or at best a sinner. And so this is what they observe going on. And what Jesus was referring to that, you know, you guys missed the point again and again and again. It's not because the law was defective, but because you don't understand that there's more to this than meets the eye. That it's in here that you're affected. And it's in here and from in here that all of these things that you do and that you say or that we do and we say come from. And it wasn't anything that they didn't understand, but it was easier for the Pharisees and the scribes to, as it said in that reflection, to attribute all the problems to what they were consuming what they weren't consuming, but they missed the point that they can also consume through their ears, through their eyes. And that's where we find ourselves. That lots of stuff that lodges in our memories, or we could say even in our hearts, comes from outside that we take in. What we watch on TV, what we see on our computer screen or on our phones, what we hear people say, what we read, all of that stuff comes into us. And we have to know what to do with it. Otherwise, it can slowly but surely turn us. Like, I am well acquainted with someone who is the polar opposite from me when it comes to political stuff. And we kind of go back and forth accusing each other of drinking the Kool-Aid of the other side, of taking in, in all of these things that are said one way or another about what's going on in Afghanistan or what went on in the previous administration or this or that, and we go back and forth and it's because we have taken so much of this stuff in from what we heard and what we've read and we've drawn conclusions from it. We don't, you know, get too uppity with each other, but it's just an example of how things come into us and according to the way we think or what we already believe, we either discard this information or we keep it, and if we keep it, how do we use it? And if we use it wrongly, then we understand a little more about what Jesus is talking about. It's people, for example, who are addicted to various things, like addicted to pornography. They take all of this in, and what happens to them? They become corrupted in their own way. And they may act out on that corruption, or they may just get more and more into it. And they end up breaking the law because of the images that they download and the stuff that they keep, and maybe the connections that they make as a result. And there are lots of other things because we are bombarded by images, by words, 
We can't help but hear things. We can't help but see certain things. But we need help to discern what it is that we need to take in and what we need to discard. And that's where our faith comes in. We have to be aware that we, as strong as we may feel and as, um, let's say, powerful as we might believe ourselves to be, we're actually more susceptible to temptation than we think. And we can end up saying things, doing things, and afterwards wondering, where did that come from? Why did I say that? Or what was I thinking? And it's because in the course of living, we've heard things, we've seen things, we've taken things in, and we've kept them, maybe we've thought about them, what have you, and they ended up affecting what we say and how we treat other people, and even how we look at God, how we look at our faith. There's plenty to challenge us today. There's plenty of doubt in the world around us whether God even exists. There are plenty to challenge our notions of faith. And when we as Christians assert our faith, there are people who tell us, you know, well, that's fine for you, just keep it to yourself. We don't need to know it, we don't want to know it. And why do you think you're so special? But yet we believe that what makes us different is the fact that we believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. And not only is he Lord for us, but he's the Lord of the universe. That he is the Lord of life. The one by whom, through whom, and for whom all things were made. That he has a claim on this world. That he is the expression of God's will for humanity for the world that we live in. And that we are privileged to be a part of that by virtue of our baptism, by his call. Which is one of the reasons why St. James in his rather short letter that we find in the New Testament spends a lot of time talking about the difference between talking a good game and playing it. That it's not enough to just talk about something. Or as he says today, you know, some people are just so different that you can look in the mirror and when you walk away, you forget what you look like. And he said, that's not really very helpful. And he says, that just means that there are people who pay no attention to what's going on in them or in the world around them. And they forget what it is that they are supposed to be doing. They forget who they are. They forget their identity. And we can be so overwhelmed at times by things happening in the world around us that disturb us, that happening in our own lives that, that really upset us, whether it's sickness or whether it's something on a grander scale that's happening that like in Afghanistan or in Haiti or the impending hurricane going to hit the Gulf Coast and people we may know there that are in harm's way or people who just are you know constantly on our minds because of maybe where they live what they're going through. We've got plenty of upheaval in our life. Things that challenge us and challenge our faith. But we're reminded today that we're not those that look in the mirror and walk away and forget who we are. That we are God's people. We are Christ's brothers and sisters. We are living members of Christ's body. And so, it's important for us as we live with that identity 
to know that the things that affect us from outside, the images that we take in, the things that we hear, that we have to use the grace that we're given, that we have to depend on the help of the Holy Spirit to learn how to discern what these things, which of these things we should maintain, what we should keep, and what we have to discard, and how we need to really police ourselves with the help of the Lord's grace so that we act in the way that says really who we are and who we are. So, what Jesus tried to do with the scribes and the Pharisees, and he tried again and again and again, was to get them to see that their faith had to go beyond the observance of the rules. They had to come to understand that they were participants in this mystery of relationship with God, and that they had to take responsibility for what was going on. They couldn't just measure their faithfulness by keeping the law. Because which one of them was able perfectly to fulfill 631 or 613 precepts? None of them could. But yet they presented themselves as those who were and did and expected other people to measure up. So Jesus tries to free them by getting them to face the reality of their own human weakness and their dependence on the grace of God and not on themselves. And that's one of the reasons why we Christians, as we gather today here, that we don't just rely upon our own strength, we rely on the grace of Christ's forgiveness for us, for our failings, our sins, the things that we admit to, that we say that, you know, we were sorry for, because we know that they become obstacles or they become problems, or they can be. But also, we admit that we need strength that only Christ himself can give us, and that's what we do in the Holy Eucharist, because we, by receiving Christ's body and blood, remember who we are, whose we are, and what it is that he calls us to do and how he calls us to live. Every communion reminds us that we are called to be other Christs in this world that we live in, which means that our life is then meant to be a continuous purification of all those things that keep us from being Christ's life. So, once again today, we are immersed by his word in the truth. We are immersed in the power of his love. We are immersed again in his call to us to be who we have been created and called to be, who we have been made by water and the spirit and baptism, and who Christ needs us to be for the world that we live in, to be examples and to be signs that his love and his truth matters more than anything else because it is the only way that we come to the fullness of life and fulfill the will of God for us and for our world. Amen.